Hey everybody, welcome back. We're going to go ahead and pick up where we left off. So we're still in the same PowerPoint presentation and we're going to go and start talking about the lens makers formula. Okay, so let me go ahead and start that. So we've talked about a converging lens, positive lens, diverging lens, negative lens, and focal length. What the lens makers formula does is tells, it tells you if you want to make a lens with a specific focal length, here's how to do it. Now the formula is right down here. There you see it right there. I'm not going to derive the formula in the video. If you want to see a derivation of this, it's done in the computer homework problem, volume five, number two, thin lens. Ziz, I think. Thin lenses or thin lens, whatever. Okay. Um, Dr. Holmes wrote that, and in the introduction, he goes through it's rather, it's a neat formula, a derivation. It's a little bit long, but uh, all, all he does is he shows you, you, you use Snell's Law uh, and you trace rays through and using the thin lens approximation, the fact that the thickness in the middle is not too big and that the angles aren't too big, so you can use the small angle approximation, you can actually derive this formula. Now, I will tell you, it's a little, a little frustrating, that Dr. Holmes uses a different sign convention for these R's. These are the radii of curvature of these surfaces. He uses a different sign convention than I do. So when he derives this formula, he's going to have a plus sign here. And I'll talk more about that later. I like this using the convention that I'm going to describe in this video that goes with this minus sign. Um, and, and you'll see why I like my convention better. But anyway, this is derived in that, in that computer problem. Okay, so in this formula, what are the factors that are important? All right, well, first of all, here is my lens. I'm going to say the index of the lens material is N. The index of the surroundings is N subscript SUR. Now, most of the time, the surroundings will be air, so that index is going to be 1. So this factor n minus n surround over n surround, if it's error, you may notice that this just factors to n minus 1 because we're going to assume the index of error is 1. In fact, if you look up LensMaker's formula in a book or online, you may see that factor written as n minus 1 because they assume that you always have error outside of the lens. But I'm going to write the more general formula so that we can change the surroundings like in one of your homework problems where you're going to take a lens, uh, see what it does in air, and then put it under water where you assume the index and surroundings is about 1.33. That will change the focal length. Okay, so there is the index factor. Notice that that is what I call a material factor. So the focal length is going to depend on two things. One of those things is what is the material of the lens, more specifically, what is the refractive index of the lens and the surroundings? Because if you think in Snell's law, right, it's the refracting of the rays of the light that's going to determine the focal length. Snell's law tells you everything you need to know about the refraction. And in Snell's law, you have N1 and N2. The other thing that you have in Snell's law is you have the angle theta 1, the incident angle, and the refracted angle theta 2. So what determines the theta 2 that you get, right, for a given theta 1? The indices, but also what is the angle theta 1? Okay, and what determines that is going to be the orientation of the surface normal lines with the rays. And what's going to determine that is how curved is the surface? What's the curvature of the surface? So we use these radii of curvature to describe that. So that's the second factor. So that is what I call the shape factor. So the two factors that determine the focal length of the lens are material and shape. All right, so how do we define these radii of curvature? Okay, well, first of all, we need to make sure we know what we mean by surface one and two. So this left surface will always be surface one. Because we trace the light with an object on the left side, the light going left to right, the first surface that the light's going to hit for a lens is going to be the left surface, so I call that surface one. You may also hear me refer to that as the front surface. 
surface two is the right surface, or I'll sometimes call that the back surface. So to visualize radius R1, think of the circle, imagine the circle or sphere, I should say, in 3D, that surface one is part of. And it's going to look something like that. You see how surface one is part of that sphere, circle in two dimensions. So this R1 is the radius of that circle or sphere. But we have to be careful because whether these surfaces are what I call C-shaped like that or D-shaped like that, <clears throat> some people use convex concave to describe the orientations. I again find that a little confusing. So I'm going to say C-shaped, D-shaped. But that orientation is going to be important uh, in determining the refraction. So we want to keep track of whether we have a C-shaped or D-shaped surface. So the way we'll do that is we will allow these radii to be positive or negative. So here's the convention we're always going to use. We're always going to measure the radius of curvature from the surface to the center of its sphere. So for this front surface, number one, from surface to center is to the right. That is a positive radius of curvature in this formula. <clears throat> okay, now we can also imagine the surface, I'm sorry, the sphere for surface two. And you might look and see that, ooh, surface two isn't quite as curved as surface one. And that means it's going to be part of a larger sphere. So it's going to have a bigger radius of curvature if we look at the just the distance. And it does. But with this convention for measuring the radius from surface two to its sphere center, that's to the left. So in this formula, the way it's written, we're going to have to make sure we have a negative value put in for that R2. That's the convention that I'm going to follow. We always measure from surface to center. That goes with this minus sign right here. The convention that Dr. Holmes uses, he says if surface one is C-shaped, then that's a positive radius. But for surface two, you always measure from center to surface for surface two. So he would call that a positive R2, and he would have a plus sign right here instead of a minus sign. I like my convention better. Don't tell him that because you always measure the, the radius from surface to center. It doesn't matter what side of the lens the surface is on. You always measure from surface to center, and that goes with that minus sign. Okay, so there you go. That's the lens maker's formula. Now let's look at some of the consequences of this. Here's the formula again. And one thing I want to remember, you always measure the radius of curvature from surface to center of sphere. What that means again is, if you think about it, if the surface is what I call C-shaped, I don't care if it's on side one or two, that's always going to have a positive radius. And if it's D-shaped, I don't care if it's surface one or two, that's always going to have a negative radius. Okay? All right. Now, the next thing I want to establish is there's an easy way just by looking at a lens or feeling it without imaging anything with the lens to determine if it's a positive or negative, converging or diverging. I claim that a positive lens is always thicker in the middle than at the edges and a negative lens is always thinner in the middle than at the edges. And I just want to show you, it's sort of fun just to look at this formula and see that the math is telling you that. So what I'm going to do, let me just end this show. I'm going to go to my notebook so I can scribble easier. And you see right here, I have the lens maker's formula written. Okay, And what I want to do is let's look at a conventional positive lens, which looks like this. Okay, so um, if I were to ask you, this is surface one, right? This is surface two. What is the sign, S-I-G-N, of surface one? It's radius of curvature. Well, it's C-shaped, 
So that's going to be a positive radius of curvature. How about surface 2? Well, it's D-shaped, so that's going to be negative. If you look mathematically up here, 1 over R1 is going to be positive. 1 over R2 is going to be negative. So when you subtract 1 over R2 from 1 over R1, you're going to get a positive value. This term, the index term, we always assume to be positive because we assume the index is going to have a high, I'm sorry, the index of the lens is always larger than the index of the surroundings. So that's going to give us a positive F. Now, if I take another lens, and let's say I design it like this, so I'll go like that, and then I'll go like that, okay? Forgive my drawing, it's not perfect, I know. Hey guys, surface one, is that positive or negative? It's C-shaped, it's positive. How about surface two? That's C-shaped, it's positive. Now comes the trickier question. They're, both of these guys are positive. Which one's bigger? Which has a larger radius of curvature? Just imagine the spheres that these surfaces are part of. If you do that, I think you'll see that R2, right, has got to be bigger than R1. That surface isn't as curved. It's part of a larger sphere. So look, mathematically up here, I have 1 over small positive minus 1 over large positive. That's going to be positive, right? 1 over small positive is bigger than 1 over larger positive. So I'm still going to get a positive F. Now, if I turn this lens around, so it's like this, oops, oh my gosh, forget that, it's hard for me to do this, there it is, oh yeah, that's good, looking good, there you go, I've turned it around, right, but see now, I say surface 1 is D-shaped, so that's negative, R, surface 2 is D-shaped, that's negative, oops, but if I look at this, right, which one is part of a larger sphere? Well, it's surface one. So surface one is more negative than surface two. It's a larger negative number. So I have one over a larger negative number minus one over a smaller negative number. That, in fact, will turn out to be a positive difference. Okay? So it works. And if you notice, these lenses are thicker in the middle. Right, so they're all positive lenses. Now I can draw some negative lenses. Let's do that over here. Here's a conventional negative lens. Looks like, like the hourglass, if you will. Well, that surface one is D-shaped, so that's negative. Surface two is C-shaped, so that's positive. So I have one over a negative, right, minus one over a positive. Well, that's going to be a negative difference. Yep, that gives me a negative focal length. Now I can draw another negative lens. This one's tricky if I do it like this. A little bit of curvature here, and then a lot of curvature on surface two. And again, I know those don't look like they're parts of spheres, but I'm trying with my stylus. So if, if I were to look at this lens, I would say, well, surface one is C-shaped, so that's positive. Surface 2 is C-shaped, so that's positive. So R1 and R2 are both positive, but which one is bigger? Well, now R1 is bigger than R2. R1 has to be part, uh, surface 1 has to be part of a, a bigger sphere. So now if you look at that difference, 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2, you've got 1 over small positive minus 1 over big positive, that's going to be a negative difference. If I turn that lens around, it's still going to be a negative lens. I'll let you go through the check of that. And you notice these negative lenses are thinner, what I call thinner in the middle. In fact, if you wear glasses to see things far away like I do, you actually have a negative lens like that. Your eye would be right here. You have a negative lens like that. You can check that if you're wearing glasses right now to see far away. Um, if you run your fingers over the lens, you'll feel that it's thinner in the middle. Well, actually, don't do that because you're going to smudge your lens. But, well, do it and then clean your lens. Anyway, okay. Oh, this leads us to another question. 
if I make, let's go up to a positive lens. If I make a lens like this, where this is flat, and then I put some curvature on it, that's definitely thicker in the middle. That's going to be a positive lens. Okay, now surface two is D-shaped, so that's going to be negative. What about surface one? That's flat. It's not curved at all. Well, that leads us to an interesting question. What is the radius of curvature of a flat surface? Some people would call this lens a Plano convex lens. Plano if one of the surfaces is flat. Microscope objective lenses are often Plano convex. So what's the radius of, of curvature of a flat surface? Well, you might be tempted to say zero, but it's actually infinity. Because if you think about it, how big does a sphere or circle have to be so that part of it is flat? Well, that has to be an infinitely large. In fact, if you think about it right, really curved means small radius of curvature. As these surfaces get less curved, less curved, they're going to be part parts of larger and larger circles, right? Larger and larger circles. If I just am confined can you imagine just cutting like that? These sections of the circle, these arcs of the circle, they're getting less curved and less curved. Okay, so a flat is an infinite radius of curvature. God, that's terrible. I'm sorry. I Forgive me for my drawing, but I think hopefully you can follow that. Um, again, the main thing to remember is that a positive lens is thicker in the middle, a negative lens is thinner in the middle, always. And smaller absolute value of radius means more curved. Again, the sign of R is just telling you C-shaped, D-shaped. Look at the absolute value to tell you how curvy it is. So a smaller absolute value means more curved, smaller sphere. A larger R absolute value means less curved to bigger sphere. And if it's flat, you're going to make R equal infinity. What that does in your lens maker's formula, one over, <laughs> mathematicians will love to hear this, right? One over infinity is zero. <laughs> okay. Okay, mathematicians, the limit, in the limit, in the limit. How's that? Are you happy now? But physically, right, if the surface is flat, um, I'm sorry, mathematically, if the surface is flat, you just make the 1 over R vanish in this formula. Okay, that's the lens maker's formula. Don't want, don't want to say any more about it. Next, we're going to actually look at um, image formation and do some ray tracing, but that's the next video. Goodbye!